cleaning up toys. You're just gonna go take them out again later. You said it! Tom Thomas, if you're done cleaning up, go and eat your lunch. Okay, be there soon. Nolik, can you wait for me? Uh-huh. He calls this cleaning up. my mom. She started vacuuming. sucked into the vacuum? Oh, no! Did he stay back there? Tom Thomas, what's the matter? <sighs> Mom, I can, I can, I can finish vacuuming you. I'm, I mean, for you. All right, I'll go clean the dishes. No lick, no lick. small and unnoticeable. But if dust gets inside machines and appliances, it's a disaster just waiting to happen. It can keep gears from turning properly. Dust can make appliances overheat. And if dust gets onto electric contacts, it can create a short circuit that can even cause a fire. That's why we fixies have to constantly clean the insides of appliances from dust. Even though a lot of us are allergic to it, he, he, ha, chew! If only people would just dust a little more often than they do right now! Ha, 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 chew! At least people could dust more on the outside. That would make our work so much easier. And their equipment would break a whole lot less often. Well, did you find him? No! It's all my fault. My mom asked me to clean up my toys, and I didn't just do it like she asked. Now it sucked him in because of me. Nolik! Nolik! So what do you say, Tom Thomas? Yeah. Yeah. What? 
what? I already apologized, and I already promised to clean up my toys. And why are you sneezing? To keep you company, so you'd feel a little better. <laughs> Paper. Hey, Tom Thomas! You're watering plants? Not only. I'm writing an essay for school. I don't get it. I have to write an essay that's called How I Take Care of Nature. Only I have to write what's true, so I'm writing what's true. Watering my plants. <laughs> oh! Chusaka! Chusaka! Come here, girl! Stop! Don't be scared! Why did you pick her up? I want to pet her a little so I can write about how well I take care of animals. Tom Thomas, I want to take care of nature too! That sounds good. And what should we be doing? We could try saving air by not breathing as often. Awesome idea! Way to go! Saving air! Let's go for it! And ready? <gasps> Humans invade nature and destroy more and more of her riches with each passing year. They extract her minerals and oil, cut down her trees, and pollute her air and water. They do all of this to produce food and all sorts of other things. It's a shame that people don't really need all these things that they produce. They often buy something and then just toss it away when it's still almost new. And then there's all the food that humans buy and just throw away. So if you want to help nature, try not to buy anything that you really don't need. And take good care of the things that you do buy. And you can be sure that we Fixies will do everything we can to make your things last as long as possible. <sighs> That's it. Now we can write it. Uh-huh. Write this. I also do my duty by saving air. A whole 20 seconds worth. You got it? What's that noise? Huh. I must have left it running when I needed some water for my plants. Tom Thomas, I think you should write that you're saving water, too. It really matters, because there's not enough of it. Nolik, that's a good idea. Let's add that. Hi there. What are you guys up to? We're writing about how Tom Thomas protects nature. It's a homework assignment for school. Uh-huh. I've already written how I'm watering the plants, I'm good to living creatures, how I'm saving air and water, and how I'm conserving carrots, too. I never want to eat them, especially in soup. Not eating your vegetables? No way. Doesn't count. You sure of that? Mm-hmm. Why did you rip your paper out? You won't let me say how I'm conserving carrots, right? So I'll have to rewrite it. Ah, uh, you're not taking care of nature. What? Where'd you get that idea from? That's all I'm doing. No. When you keep on throwing your paper out, it means you're not taking care of trees out there. What trees are you talking about? Didn't you know humans make paper out of trees? Humans make paper by cutting down trees and shredding the pieces into chips. The chips are then placed in water, chemicals are added to the solution, and then it is all mixed together into a mushy, watery substance called pulp. Next, the water is drained from the pulp and with the help of huge rotating drums is flattened into thin sheets of paper. So you see, to make new paper, humans have to keep cutting down trees. And you should know this. 
If every person on the planet would use one less sheet of paper, you know, they'd save a million trees all together. You sure? I'm sure. And now that you know about trees and paper, what are you gonna do next? Hey, you know, I've decided not to write any essay for school. You, you what? I want to help save more trees by using less paper. That's all. Oh, Tom Thomas, you're my hero. Ah. The barcode. And so, what do we do if we happen to see humans? Hide from them, right? And what if you've got nowhere to hide? Then we turn ourselves into screws. That's correct. Where could it be? Uh, where on earth could I have put it? Oh, I'm such a scatterbrain. Ah, it's Professor Eugenius. There's no need to hide from him. He's our friend. Where has it gone? Ah, uh, did you lose something again, Professor? Yeah, how did you guess? It's just awful. Yesterday I started testing a new iron, and today, ah, uh, it's totally disappeared into thin air. Where could you have put that thing? Um, I've got it down to two places. It could be in the warehouse or mm, not in the warehouse. Yeah, that information will help us find it. Or not help us find it. <laughs> <laughs> Class, follow me to the warehouse. If we have to look inside each one of them, it'll take us two days. Maybe we'll get lucky. Let's look in this one. No. Inside there is a fan. A fan? Wow, it's a fan. Hmm. And what's inside this one? Uh, a mixer. Yeah, amazing. And what's in this box? An electric kettle. Made in Germany, by the way. He's right. There is a kettle in there. Professor, is this some trick? I don't get it. Grandpus, how do you do it? It's got to be magic. What else? Here's how I think he's doing it. I think the professor has glasses made to see through the boxes. <laughs> of course not. I only know how to read the barcode that you can see on each of those boxes. Oh, that. Exactly. If you look at the printing on packages and boxes, you will often find a symbol with a lot of black lines and numbers. These symbols are called barcodes. Each barcode has all sorts of information. What the item is, what country it came from, and even in which factory it was made. With the help of a special reading device, a scanner, it's possible to read all the information the barcode holds. It really is an excellent system for stores to know what they've got. You don't even need a scanner to do it? I can figure out barcodes without one. I'll teach you if you want. Class. Let's see. We're looking for a box with an iron. There. Well, bring in the professor. Today, on almost everything that is sold, there is some kind of mark. For instance, this kind of mark is called a barcode. And this one, a QR code. These marks help us find out a lot of information. Suppose you walk by a building and see a QR code on it. Just point the camera on your mobile phone at it, and information about who built it and when it was built will appear on the screen. Isn't that great? It's a shame not every phone can do this yet. And that's not all. There are also marks that work without pictures. There are electronic chips that can hold information. These chips can be put inside of ID cards or travel passes, and all you need to do is press the card near a reader so it can check if you're allowed to go on through. Ah, uh, you just made my day. You found it so quickly. What would I do without you? Huh? Is something wrong? This is not an iron. Whose sandwich is that? Mine. Yesterday I wanted to put it into the fridge, only I guess I put it into my... Oh, 
I just get distracted so easily. Look, we need to think this through logically. If you went and placed your sandwich into the box where the iron should have gone, then you must have put your iron in the refrigerator. Oh, here you are. Here you are, my new iron. Oh, I looked everywhere for you. Thank you, my friends, once again. There's no need to thank us at all. You're always there when we need help. You've even let us open our own school here in your laboratory. And we don't have to hide ourselves. Yeah, that's because you're so kind and you love fixies. The Vent. Tom Thomas. Tom Thomas. Okay. Simka, Tula, check it out. It's pretty, isn't it? Oh, splendid. It's nothing but a trinket. It's completely useless. Useless? Look how well it matches my hair clip. Useful things are the kinds of things you truly need. For instance, like this rope ladder I've got. It's splendid. And where do you plan on climbing with this thing? Now this mirror here is both useful and pretty. Oh, how splendid. Tula, you say everything is splendid. Well, here's something super splendid that I bet you don't have. Oh, what is it? It's a mechanical super claw. It must be just perfect for scratching your back. <laughs> now look what I have. A photograph of Vector. And he signed it for me, too. Are you sure that's Vector? You've got a photo of the bravest fixie on the face of the entire planet? Yeah, and the most beautiful. Is it him for sure? No way, let me take a look. Uh-uh, you'll smudge it. You've been fooled. No. Yes. Jealous? You are. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ah! My photo! Oh, no! What was that? Uh, a draft. This is completely your fault. It's not my fault. It's your fault for bragging so much. Please, girls, stop fighting. Let's go find it. To lose a picture signed by the most famous fixie ever. It will be horrible when that picture of a fixie is found by humans. So where could it be? <gasps> I know how we can find it. Exactly. We'll blow a bubble and watch which way it goes as it floats away. We'll follow it and find your picture. Do you know why you can blow bubbles out of soapy water? At the surface of any liquid, there's an invisible film that is very thin but very strong. If you want to see it for yourself, fill up a glass with water all the way to the very top. Now you need to take a coin and carefully drop it into the water sideways. Then drop in another coin, and another, and another. You'll see that the water doesn't pour out but rises up and forms a hump. That's because the water at the top sticks together. Why? Because of a force called surface tension. Thanks to surface tension, water can form drops. It also helps us blow soap bubbles. Because when we add soap into the water, the film gets even stronger. But still not strong enough to stop the bubbles from bursting. <laughs> okay, it's ready. Now we need to blow. <gasps> Do it together. And... <gasps> This way's gonna work. Look, it's flying! I did it! The vent! Of course! Why didn't I think of that before? Have you ever seen holes in the bathroom or kitchen that are covered with grids? Well, those are called vents. And behind the vent is a long pipe called an air duct. Unpleasant odors and musty air can be forced into the ducts and sent out of the house. And if you want that old, stale air to leave the house even faster, open a window and let in some of the fresh air from outside. 
Keep the air in your home as fresh as it can be. Hey, take a look! It got stuck over there! Get it before it flies away! How can we grab it? What do you mean? Don't you remember what I've got? Tideesh! Thank you, Simka. What would we ever have done without your mechanical claw? And your fantastic ladder? Then here you go. A present for you. Oh, thanks. It's just great. And I want to give you this. Oh, gee. It's just splendid. Simka, are you here? Huh. What you got there, Simka? A little mirror. It's pretty, don't you think? Oh, you girls. <laughs> You're all the same. <sighs> the pen. Not here, either. Tom Thomas! Are you looking for me? Huh. No, for a red pen. I need it right now. What do you need it for? Here, look what my teacher wrote in my assignment book. Bad behavior during the lesson, fidgeting, and talking. What are you going to do with the red pen? Your teacher left something out? I thought maybe, you know, I could fix it a bit. I hope I find that pen. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh. oh, wow. Good catch. So, what do you want to fix on it? I'll just add a couple of no's. And then it will say that I had no bad behavior during the lesson, no fidgeting, and no talking. See? No problem. Cool. And then add this at the end. Tom Thomas is a perfect student. Nah. Then they would guess I did it. What, is it clogged up? A little scribble will do it. That's not a pen. It's more like a pen knife. Oh, look. The ball's missing. What ball? It's a pen. It's a pen, but it's a ballpoint pen. <laughs> Old-fashioned pens work by dipping the pen into a jar of ink. But with a ballpoint pen, the ink is stored inside of a tube that has a metal tip on the end with a small steel ball. Well, small for humans, that is, but of course, for fixies, it's quite large. When you drag the pen across the paper, the ball spins around and gets ink on it from inside the tube. Then it turns over and the ink rolls out onto the paper. So without the ball, a ballpoint pen won't write at all. So what am I going to do? That's my only red pen. Hi, everybody. Why do you look so sad? Uh, we lost the ball from the tip of this pen. Where? It's here somewhere. Then you're in luck, boys. In the pack of mat there's a metal detector. You can use it to find different kinds of metal objects. Nah, that's not it. I can see that myself. It's not on the table, Nolik. Until not that long ago, humans used pens that had to be dipped over and over again into an inkwell. This was quite inconvenient. And so to make writing easier, the fountain pen was invented. A fountain pen could be filled up with ink so it could write for a much longer time. But fountain pens would often leak, leaving blots of ink on the paper. This problem was solved with the invention of the ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pens are simple, handy, and reliable. Except that you can't write with them on a wall or upside down for a long time. That's because the ball uses up the ink on it, and the ink can't flow up to the tip. But even this problem has been solved. There are now special ballpoint pens that can be used by astronauts floating in space. Is the one? You're right. That's it. Don't you just see how awesome my metal detector is? Is that what you're calling me now? Yeah! Tom Thomas, help 
us. And now! Tidish! Cool. By the way, what do you need the red pen for? Well, Tom Thomas and I need to fix something in his assignment book. What? If I knew that, I wouldn't have helped you out. So no fidgeting and no talking. Hmm. And your teacher, she writes in your assignment book when you behave well? Uh-huh. Whenever we behave well, she writes a note in our books right away. Ah. Did you see, Simka, how Tom Thomas managed to outsmart everybody? Since I see nothing else here from your teacher, does that mean you behaved badly the other days? Uh-huh. What? Well, uh... Did you see, Nolik, how Tom Thomas just managed to outsmart himself? The remote. Hey, Simka, the button got stuck on the remote. How can we get it back out of there? Look and learn, Nolik. Please help! Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Oh, oh, oh! Should I let it go now? Whoa. Oops! <laughs> no, like, hide somewhere. She stole the remote. Nolik? Where are you hiding? Nolik? Hello there, Fixies. Hey, where are you? Hey, Tom Thomas, you got here just in time. Chusaka ran off with the TV remote. And so what? I can turn it on without it. And my favorite cartoon is just about to start. Forget about the cartoons, will ya? Nolik is missing! I'm afraid Nolik hid inside of the remote. And Chusaka took it. Oh, no, no, it's in big-time trouble. Tom Thomas, there must be something you can do! Chusaka, Chusaka, come here. Where is that dog hiding? I'm gonna go look in the other rooms. Simka, Tom Thomas, here I am. I'm over here. <sighs> For now, I'll wait here. Chusaka's not out there. Where are you? Hey, Simka. I ran to get a pack of mat What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna search for the infrared ray that comes out of the remote. That's so great. But what is it? I'll explain it to you. Inside of most remote controls, there's a special type of light bulb called a light emitting diode, or LED for short. When we press a button, the LED sends an invisible infrared ray. And in the TV, there is a receiver for these invisible rays. The TV understands the command that comes from the remote control and carries it out, like changing the channel or the volume. If the rays are invisible, then how is it possible to see them? In the pack mat I've got these special goggles that can help me. And now what? Yell to Nolik. Get him to close the contact on any one of the buttons. Nolik! You gotta push one of the buttons down on the remote. A button? But how am I gonna do that? Wait, one second. Chusaka Chusaka with a brain full of rush. Nothing for you here. But here's something. There he is. He's over there. Chusaka, come here. Do you want a hot dog? So you want to play tough? All right, then. out for the remote's rays. It's just a shame it's impossible for me to see them. What are you saying? You can! If 
you want to see infrared rays, all you have to do is look through a digital camera. Try it for yourself. Turn on the camera on a mobile telephone. Now go ahead and press any button on the remote control and point the camera toward the front of it. You'll see a bright dot on the screen of the camera. That's the light emitting diode working. It's letting off a special light that can't be seen by the naked eye. It's also possible to point the remote control at a mirror. And then through the camera, you can see how the light emitting diode turns itself on. So what that means is that invisible rays bounce off of a mirror in the same way that regular light does. So you can control the TV by bouncing the light from a remote control off of a mirror. You don't believe me? Then go ahead and try it yourself. By the way, if your toys weren't all stuffed under the bed, we would have found the remote without the goggles. Don't worry about it. When the cartoons are over, I'll put them away. So, you done watching? Time to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> The motion sensor. This part has to be replaced with one that's new. I've got an idea. How about we run to the warehouse and get it? Because you don't have time to go there. And that way you can keep on working. All right then. Only remember the code for the part. A8375. I'll remember it for sure. Why is Lisa always there at the wrong time? Do we have to wait till she goes away? <laughs> what for? We'll sneak out behind her. Did it? Did you find the part? It's here. Are we ready? Yeah, yeah we're, we're ready. ready. Let's do it. Ah, Professor Eugenius, you're in here. Uh, do you know why this door just opened ah, and closed by itself? Ah, of course I know, Elisa. It's because I converted it into an automatic one. You see, I installed a motion sensor above it. A motion sensor is like an electronic eye that watches everything that moves in front of it. Did you ever wonder how doors open by themselves at places like stores or at the airport? They open with the help of motion sensors. If the sensor sees that someone walks up to the door, it sends a signal to the door's electric motor. The electric motor opens the door and then automatically closes it after the person walks through it. That man is just astounding. Only a bit untidy. The door is automatic now? Then why didn't it open for us on the way here? Because we're too little for that motion sensor. But the part's bigger than we are. Big enough for the sensor to see it. Then how do we get in there? We can fool that thing if we stay close by the wall. Now let's keep this as close to the wall as we can. This door is a little too automatic. And these parts are here again. Didn't I put them away? Ah, the sensor still noticed us. Here's what we gotta do. Let's break it. Why do we gotta break it? All we have to do is deactivate the unit. Sensors are used to help people in all sorts of different situations. For instance, motion sensors notice when someone is moving so they can automatically open a door or turn on a light. Some automobiles are equipped with rain sensors. If it starts raining or snowing, the sensor automatically turns on the car's windshield wipers. There are also sensors that react to how much light there is. In the evening, when it gets dark, light sensors can be used to turn on street lamps. And in the morning, when it gets light again, the sensor switches them off. A smoke detector can sense when there's smoke inside. The sensor can be used to turn on a fire alarm or even an automatic fire extinguishing system. I 
turned it off. That should do the trick. Great job. Let's go. Titties! <laughs> Professor Eugenius, mission accomplished. Well done, Fixies. Uh, actually, not that well. This part here is A7583. And I asked for A8375. Digit, didn't you say you knew the code number? I did know it, but somehow forgot it. Ah, uh, Digit, I can't believe that you forgot it. All right, we'll just have to go out one more time. Thanks, but no thanks. I'll get it this time. I forgot to warn the professor that we've turned off the sensor. And I'm afraid he's expecting that the door will automatically open up. Professor! Stop! You don't! Forgive us, we didn't mean it. The fire extinguisher. So, who can tell me? home, what is the greatest danger of them all? Chuzaka. Well, dogs are dangerous for us, but what is very scary for us and for humans? Fire! <laughs> Where? I was just answering what you asked us. Although your joke was awful, Fire, your answer was actually correct. Nothing can be worse than getting caught inside a house on fire. Don't know much about chemistry, but I can handle, sir. Tree. That's an interesting idea. I have to try it out. And that's why every Pacamat has a fire extinguisher inside of it. And how do you turn them on? Well, I'll show you at the end of the lesson. Nolik, listen, yell fire. How come? I just want to find out how the professor turns on a fire extinguisher. Forget it, Fire. I won't do it for you. Ugh. Fire! Huh? Huh? You again! I was joking. It's a stupid kind of joke, and I want you to leave right now. Actually, I should call your parents to discuss this terrible behavior. Fire is no joke at all. Remember, never fool with fire. Of course, you should never play with matches or with lighters. Everybody knows that. But those aren't the only things that can cause a fire inside of a house. So can a stove or a fireplace. And don't forget electrical appliances, like electric burners, space heaters, and irons. If you act carelessly around any of these appliances, they can cause a fire. And we should never forget to take extra special care with sparklers, candles, and fireworks. Sparks can jump off of them and set fire to highly flammable things like paper, wood, or cloth. So, what do you do if a fire suddenly breaks out? That's right! You call the fire department by dialing the number for all emergencies, 911. Huh? What's going on? No way. No way! Fire? It's burning for real! Fire! What do I do? Oh, yeah! I need a fire extinguisher! Where are you? And that's how a Pacamat can become a fire extinguisher. Do you understand? We understand. There's a fire! It's over there! Enough! You don't know when to stop, Fire! I'm not joking this time! Please believe me, it's there! Hmm. Nice try, Fire. Oh, look! He even used smoke this time! No, Simka. That smoke's from a fire! Uh-huh. I'm sure that this time it's for real. It's the truth! I swear I'm not lying! This time I think it's true. He's not joking. We've got ourselves a real fire here! Tula! Simka! <laughs> Turn off the soldering iron! Uh-huh. Got it! Be careful, kids. You have to stay back here, away from the fire. And what can I do to help? Take out your fire extinguisher! <sighs> Long ago, people used to put out fires with just water or sand. 
Today, people also use fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers are cylinders with hoses. They're usually painted red, so they're easy to see. The cylinder is filled up with a special powder, or foam. If someone needs to put out a fire, they point the hose at the fire, pull out the safety pin, and squeeze the handle. The foam or powder shoots out of the extinguisher and puts out the fire. Our fire extinguishers are just too small for this fire. We have to find Professor Eugenius to put it out. I already did. All right. Where's the fire? Oh. <sighs> Ooh. <laughs> Hooray! Hooray! We, we put, put out the fire! fire! You fixies are just the greatest. Thank you, you saved the whole laboratory. <laughs> not at all, colleague. If not for you fixies, I can't even fathom how this could have ended. And what I'm wondering is how the fire got started at all. Fire? I had nothing to do with that. Yeah, sure. Then who was yelling, fire, fire? You know what? Maybe it was you that set the fire. Well, if that's what happened, don't even think about coming back to school without your parents. Colleague, colleague, wait. It's all my fault. I didn't turn off the soldering iron. Forgive me. Now we know whose parents the school should be calling. <laughs> the pack a -Mat. Uh, Simka, can I have the pack a -Mat? I'd like to practice with it a little before the exam. Take it! that thing. Good. I couldn't be any worse with it. I wanted a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Actually, you were pretty close there. He did manage to get the hose, at least. <laughs> this is not at all funny. In order to get a tool out of a pac a man a fixie must not only press the button on his chest, but he must also clearly picture exactly the tool he needs. By the time they are adults, this is easy for Fixies to do. But while they're children, they must study hard to master this important skill. As Fixies learn about new tools, they take exams to prove they know how they work. And if they pass an exam, the new tool is added to their pack of mats. And there's no end to what you can find inside. Screwdrivers, hammers, ladders, vacuums, and even soldering irons. But many of the tools that Fixies use look quite different from the ones that humans have. And the reason for this is very simple. It's because Fixies have to fix appliances that are much bigger than they are. Uh, I just wish I knew which tool was gonna be on that exam. I got it! You just stay right here! Grandpus! What? Um, on the exam, which tool are you gonna ask about? It's a secret. Uh, it's too bad. But I'm sure you can keep a secret, right? Of course. Then I'll tell you. Today's exam is on pliers, you see? You won't tell anyone, will you? Not a chance. Uh, I'll never pass it. You will! He's gonna ask about pliers. Huh? How could you know that? It's a secret. <laughs> okay, Digit. See if you can get the pliers out of there. A pair of pliers is a great tool indeed. To grab and turn things, it's the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use them. All your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are Be careful how you use them, or your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are a great tool indeed. Good going. You got it. Thanks a lot, Nolik. It's not really me you should be thanking. <sighs> Grandpus, thanks a lot. For what? The secret. What secret? About the pliers. Oh, that. You know, I picked a new topic. Um, I decided that a hammer will be the tool. A hammer? Only it's a secret. I remember! <laughs> the topic I changed! It's a hammer! You sure about that? Totally. All right. I'll try to do it. A hammer is a great tool in
Cooper. I'm sure you're gonna pass. That's only if he asks me about a hammer. I'll be right back. <gasps> Grandpoos, it's a hammer for sure? Nah. A hammer would be way too easy for those kids. So now it is a drill. A drill? But only... It's a secret! <laughs> now I know. There's no doubt about it at all. It's a drill! <sighs> A drill is such a great tool indeed. To drill a hole, it is the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use it, or your finger, you could lose it. A drill is such a great tool indeed. And if it's not a drill, right. Hammers, wrenches, drills, screwdrivers, vices, mallets, saws, and pliers. All of these are super duper great tools, yes indeed. That's all. That's enough of this. I'll just go and take the exam. Yeah. Digit, come on in. Um, Professor, well, what do you want to ask me on today's exam? Nothing. You already passed. What? You mean you're not going to ask me anything at all? No need. You're excellent at getting tools out of a pack -a mat But how could you know that? That's a secret. And we fixies sure know how to keep secrets. 